Here we're looking for the area between y equals x cubed and y equals x, specifically on the interval from negative 1 to 2. I've drawn the picture for you here, and you can see that it's important to draw these pictures because if we didn't, we wouldn't have a sense of where this picture gets split up, where this area gets divided into sections. Notice that y equals x cubed and y equals x cross each other three times once at x equals negative 1, once at x equals 0, and once at x equals 1. If we didn't notice that, if we just charged ahead and wrote down the integral, something like the integral from negative 1 to 2, and then we wrote 1 minus the other, we would miss that picture, and we would miss the fact that the areas here and here, instead of combining, we would cancel them out and so we get the wrong answer, of course. So it's important to draw these pictures to have a sense of what your setup is going to look like. And it should be clear to you that there are going to be three segments to this area. One is enclosed between negative 1 and 0, another between 0 and 1, and another between 1 and 2. The fact that there are three separate areas means it's actually three separate problems. So we're going to have three integrals. The area is going to be the integral from negative 1 to 0, plus another integral from 0 to 1, plus another integral from 1 to 2. And as you're thinking about what goes inside each integral, all of these are going to use that same formula of the upper function minus the lower function. So all that's going to change from one integral to the next is which function is above the other one because they switch order whenever they cross. So for the first one, the x cubed function is above the line y equals x. And then at x equals zero, when they cross, they switch order. And so these three integrals we have set up are actually gonna look very, very similar other than the order of subtraction. But now before I go on, I wanna pause and go back a little bit I mentioned that they cross at negative one, at zero, and at one. And I wanna show you again, in case you didn't see that, or it doesn't seem obvious from the picture, you can always set those two functions equal to each other and solve. Now again, you don't wanna just divide by x because you might miss out on the possibility that x is zero and forget to include that. So instead you should solve it like you would a quadratic equation and do the same setup where you move everything to one side and then factor. So we can factor an x and then x squared minus one factors further to x plus one, x minus one. And now notice that there are three answers, one where x equals zero, one where x equals negative one, and one where x equals positive one. So that's where the limits of integration came from. All right, now we can just fill in these integrals. The first one from negative one to zero, x cubed is above and x is below. On the next one, x is above and x cubed is below. And then back to the first order. So it looks like a lot, but once you've done one of these integrals, the other two are really just the same calculations and you just reverse the order of subtraction. So for instance, we have one fourth x to the fourth minus one half x squared from negative one to zero. And then we're gonna have the same except in reverse. So one half x squared minus one fourth x to the fourth from zero to one. And then the last one will be back to the first order from one to two. So it gets a little tedious to plug all these in, but the actual calculations are not difficult to do. I'll skip the arithmetic and just tell you the answer you get should be 11 over four. And you can go through and practice if you'd like just to make sure you can get that calculation. But with all of these application problems, the important part is the setup. That's where all the tricky parts are. And then the integration itself is relatively straightforward.